G'day, my name's Eddie Springer, I'm from Springer Solar uh, and as part of our 12 volt technical series I want to talk to you today about inverters. Why we need them, what different types of inverters there are and how to get the best out of them and, and different ways you can install and use uh, your DC to AC inverters. So what, what, are, what is an inverter? Well an, an inverter will convert DC power, so our 12 volt battery systems or our 24 volt battery systems, up to 240 volts AC to allow us to run appliances, standard 240 volt appliances. They allow us to do this while we're on the road. We can have our dual battery system powering our inverter to run small, medium or even large appliances. The size of the appliance we can run really depends on the equipment we've got set up, the, the size of the solar system battery bank to be able to power that inverter. But simply put, a small inverter would allow us to run small appliances while we're on the road. This little unit here is a 350 watt 12 volt inverter. So it connects directly to our battery. Cable size is critical for all inverters. So the bigger the inverter, the larger the cable we need to install. But this little inverter, keep it nice and close to the battery, six mil square cable, 10 mil square cable, depending on distance. We connect it to our battery and we can plug in our appliances onto the inverter itself. If we had lots of small appliances, we'd plug in a small power board into that inverter and we might do multiple devices. Might recharge a laptop, uh, recharge our mobile phone, um, run a small DVD player. Um, that's going to allow us to run multiple small appliances or you know, one slightly larger appliance. 350 watts. As we move up in our inverter size, it allows us to run larger appliances. Different brand, same style of inverter, 12 volts, 900 watts, allowing us to run larger equipment. Now when we're converting DC power, 12 volt or 24 volt power, to AC through our inverter, we do lose a little bit of, uh, of energy. So they're not 100% efficient. So if you have the possibility to run a 12 volt appliance or run directly from DC, it will be more efficient than running it through an inverter. So keep that in mind, instead of running a 240 volt appliance, if you've got the ability to run it at 12 volt, run it directly from the battery. You would be using more power by running a Ingle fridge, for argument's sake, on its 240 volt lead rather through an inverter rather than running it directly from 12 volts. So not 100% efficient, um, run 12 volt where you can. As we go up in size, inverters start to give us different features. 900 watt inverter, very similar to the 350 watt, we connect it to our battery system, our cable size needs to increase to ensure we don't get voltage drop to that inverter, and we plug directly into the unit, or we plug a small power board into it and we run multiple appliances. As we start getting bigger, we start to look at inverters that might have an inbuilt transfer switch, and an inbuilt transfer switch allows that inverter to be hardwired into our system. We would need an electrician to install the unit, but it does mean that when we're connected to mains power, so when we're plugged in at a caravan park or we're plugged in at home, that inverter will allow that energy to transfer to all the power points in the van. So that's that transfer switch. It allows 240 volts to transfer through to our electrical equipment. When we disconnect from mains power, the inverter will take over. And that inverter can then power all our power points in our RV. So it can pick up the microwave circuit, it can pick up the power point at the dinette. They're, a lot, they're more expensive to install, but they do allow you a lot more uh, versatility when you're on the road. You don't have to go plugging directly into your inverter with some of these others. They are hardwired, they are installed, they might have a little remote switch for them that allows you to turn them on and off when you need them, but it does allow you to pick up the whole 240 volt circuit in the van. So that's an inverter with a transfer switch, and then the next level above that would be an inverter charger with a transfer switch. So just an inverter, these guys here make inverter chargers in a range of sizes, and when you're plugged into mains, that unit is going to charge the batteries while you're on mains, 
and when you're off mains, allows the uh, batteries to be used for 240 volts through the inverter with that transfer switch for when you're plugged in. So they all work very well, um, but like I said, sizing that cable ensures your inverter won't suffer from voltage drop and won't shut down prematurely. Traditionally, years ago, we, we, we used to sell modified sine wave inverters. So a modified sine wave inverter has got a square wave. These days, we don't stock in Springers, don't stock any modified sine wave inverters. Every inverter we sell is pure sine wave. So a pure sine wave inverter just means that that waveform, that 50 hertz, 240 volts AC waveform is perfect. You know, it, it, it's a perfect waveform versus a modified sine wave inverter, which is more a synthetic waveform or a square waveform. So when you're looking at your inverter type, um, ensure it is pure sine wave. Uh, modified sine waves are quite cheap. Pure sine wave inverters have come down so much in price that there's really no need to look for a modified these days. You can get a pure sine wave inverter at reasonable prices. The other advantage of buying a good quality inverter is that efficiency that I spoke about before will be a lot higher in the conversion from DC to AC with a better quality inverter. So instead of the inverter pulling heaps of power out of your batteries, just to deliver a small amount of wattage on the AC side, the invert, a good quality inverter will convert that energy a lot more efficiently. The other benefit of buying good quality inverters such as these is their standby power or the energy they use when they're not actually doing any work will be a lot lower. Some of these guys have got economy modes and standby modes where their power draw will be as low as 10 or 12 watts versus a really inefficient and cheap inverter might have a standby power draw of 50 watts. You know, it can be as high as four or five amps, just having the inverter there, sitting there switched on, doing no work. So be careful in your inverter choice, but in saying that, all inverters will use a little bit of energy when they're switched on and not doing any work. So when you don't need to use it, turn the inverter off save those amp hours, save that energy in your battery system so that you have that storage for later and we're not cycling the battery when it doesn't need to be cycled to ensure we get longer life. Choose your inverter to suit the equipment you want to run. There is no point having a 1800 watt or a 900 watt inverter if we just need to recharge small batteries and run small appliances. It's going to take up more room, it's going to take up more weight, it's bigger and bulkier when really we could get away with a smaller inverter. Now, when looking at inverters and looking at inverter types, some things are realistic and some things really should be left at home. So although this 2000 watt inverter here is capable of running an electric fry pan or capable of running large heating elements, you really should be trying to run those items on gas, or from an alternative source so that that energy in our batteries is stored and we, we get longer life out of our systems. Larger inverters can run microwaves and larger appliances, but for really short periods of time. As we've always said with any of our systems, manage your battery usage, look at your battery voltage, and with bigger inverter systems and larger setups, look at your battery monitor and monitor your state of charge and your battery voltage to ensure we're not over discharging those batteries so that we get longer life. Inverters will discharge your batteries faster with the more equipment you use. So just because you've got the ability to use the power doesn't mean you should use it if it's unnecessary. Thanks very much for your time again. Lovely to chat to you, lovely to see you and uh, I'm sure we'll talk again soon.